Hello and welcome to the 2020 LCS Spring Championship Final. I am Dash, joined by Crumbs, Mark Z, and Kobe for what promises to be an incredible best of five between the two teams that remain standing in the 2020 Spring Split. Gentlemen, we, we've made it all the way here, but I want to take a moment, I think, to appreciate the Herculean effort by so many people that it took to bring the LCS to this point where we can still be celebrating the best of the best on this day uh, and our promised and incredible and competitive best of five. I honestly cannot imagine how the last month would have been without this. And I get to work on it and be a part of it. Uh, and so hopefully, you know, fans and stuff also have a similar feeling of like, ah, there's, there's something on to watch or something I care about still going on. And hopefully we're providing people a lot of good entertainment. Without a doubt. And Kobe, I think, you know, when you look at this historically, just what a what a time for esports to, in a sense, almost come full circle. Right. Where, <laughs> you know, in a lot of ways, the at home was where this where esports began. And and a number of years later, yes, we've got a ton of tech behind this and it's definitely leveled up. But it, it, there's there's a bit of nostalgia that comes with being in this situation again and being able to celebrate from our bedrooms the, the, the highest tier of play. Never forget your roots, Dash. Don't forget where you came from because it's going to come in handy one day. And it's Sometimes actually good back. that yeah, we still have that like primal esports knowledge ready to pull out in cases where we really need it. Damn right. Uh, Crumbs, go ahead. I think it extends to the players, too, because you used to start your tournaments online. You didn't have LAN, so the fact that it happens online or LAN doesn't actually affect the value that it means to these players. So this is going to be an all-out finals for sure, because Cloud9 still hasn't gotten that win. Let's get into it then. A reminder that after the new champion is crowned, stick around for the LCS After Party, where Y2K and Sushi Dragon will be delivering a wild experience to wrap up the split we were kind of waxing and waning yesterday i'm excited for both performances uh, in particular sushi dragon always comes out with some wild stuff i mean just look at his He's face right there he's got fire <laughs> yeah. coming out of his mouth <laughs> out of the eyes. that's a good preview <laughs> that's a very accurate preview uh, you you get what you pay for there now state farm has allowed us to award one final assist of the day for a truly noble cause that quite honestly doesn't get enough light shed on it in this day and age. And that would be the movement of hashtag cat for Kobe <laughs> for, just, for just one tweet with hashtag cat for Kobe. You can put our poor analyst one step closer to finally getting that cat. Kobe, you look quite at home with that feline <laughs> fellow on your shoulders. What kind of a cat you looking at? Well, what would be the go-to uh, I, so for I the new furry friend? I haven't gotten to the step of what kind of cat because Travis has been so hard on the no cat that I, I need to get to step one first before I decide what kind. <laughs> <laughs> I got a recommendation. One, one, okay. uh, Russian blues, really smart and hypoallergenic. So okay. even though the fur might be really fluffy, it doesn't get anywhere. And it's, if you, if you're allergic, you don't feel it. I know the allergies was a, was a concern there, uh, particularly with maybe Crumbs double coming it. over to visit and stuff. So crumbs might have yeah, the answer. My dad was allergic to cats, brutally allergic, would never touch one. Same thing happened to my mom. She, she had cats, couldn't do it. Came to visit me, this hypoallergenic cat. Could play with it. Nothing happened. Allergies, gone. I want to see two things trending today. Hashtag LCS <laughs> and hashtag Cat for Kobe. So get on it, friends. Social media bombard Travis Gafford with those tweets. But let's go ahead and take a look at how Cloud9 and FlyQuest got here by taking one more look at our bracket. Of course, these are the only two teams that remain, but they had to do battle against a whole slew of opponents to get to this point. Evil Geniuses taking down FlyQuest the first time around, but falling short the second. Meanwhile, Cloud9 has had to run through the top layer of that bracket to be the final boss here. And FlyQuest, playing more games than any in the postseason, has returned here to their first ever final appearance for the organization. I mean, this is a U-shape. You know, they start in the top bracket, drop down, then slowly rise back up through five best of fives. That's so many uh, compared to, you know, what playoffs used to have where you would get three at most. So FlyQuest has a ton of postseason experience. And I think they've benefited from all the hard work that they've put in to make that U-shape come full circle. The team is looking better than ever. Yeah. Uh, the team is looking better than ever, and they'll need to look better than ever considering their opponents are Cloud9. One of the teams looking like the most dominant we've ever had in the history of the LCS, only dropping two games all season long. One in the regular season, one in the postseason, with only three more wins to lock it up for the title. It, it seemed all but faded in the regular season that Cloud9 would, would end up here. But I want to take another look at how exactly they did it and secured their spot in the finals. 
but Meteos is able to finally grab the kill here for Hunter Thieves on the top side. And this Gila gonna chase even further. Good God! Two Last for one deal. The very end of the Paddle Star. Buy one, get one free. Triple kill for Nisky. Throw another one in the shopping cart just because he likes the way he makes it happen. Hunter Thieves will take that summoner spell as the true shot barrage strikes Vulcan. Drake slain by Hunter Thieves. Ocean Soul prevented. TP's coming in. Licorice into the middle of four. And that is a disastrous encounter for Hunter Thieves. Stunt will be the second to fall. Ryoma's phone will join him. It's a two for zero. Jizuke go. gonna be in a fight two on one. A lot of damage over there. The spell joke. Oh my god. Hey, Flabber! You gotta be kidding me! Get the kill 1v2 flash to the wall of safety! Spencer this has got coming to the backhand side. Kumo double knockup. Gonna look for number three. Nice flash! Oh! Licorice takes him down. Spencer can certainly try to damage his old teammate, but it's not gonna be enough. Licorice has no flash. Jizuke has hit. He's gonna burn flash for the play. EQ. One more item will kill him. No one. Oh, no, he gets man. hit. One more key. Ah. He needs to get the spell. He has some mana. You gotta be freaking kidding me. Blabber's there to stop down Jizuke. Four, now five strong. Here comes the ring for Cloud9. One for zero. Already Bang is gone. They're gonna hope to get away. They can't get it. The Realm War oh, God. down in time. <laughs> Fun Light Ace. Absolute slaughter. Bit of CC towards Vulcan, and here comes Nisky, and he wants the play. They're gonna bring back Zazel, stop on huge pulls of caskets. Four, but no way out for the Braum. One for zero, Cloud9's favor. And this means C9 will fight full power. Going for the play into Zazel. Equalize is going to force Bang to flash away as Vulcan front lines. Zuki tries for the play. Can't get much done. Licorice still holding the front side. Zazel running low on health. Bang is going to drop to the flame spinner. Niski's already on the board of this one. It's a 5v4 chase down. Kubo burns the flash. The next slow will guarantee he dies. It's all right. My life for Ayer. I'll drop. You can kill me, but maybe Sven Scaron will live. He's waiting over the wings. Vulcan knows he's there. Can't find the hook. But can he find the steel? Has to jump over the wall. There is now no chance to take with the Elder Dragon. This will go Cloud9's way. They will now knock down Sven Scarin as well. He's gonna <laughs> drop. That's the killing spree for Niski. Cloud9, 18 to 9. Elder Dragon buff on. They're ready to end the game. Dominance from split start to where we are now, looking to make it from split start to split end. This Cloud9 squad, not the first ever to go 17 and 1 in the regular split, but Crumbs, is this the most dominant team we've ever had in the LCS? Absolutely. The fact that every other team, it, they're even scared to practice Cloud9, just is speaks to how far away they have been from the rest <laughs> of the competition. Because sometimes when you have a really good team, you get smashed so hard, you're not even learning from losing to them. And so Cloud9 got so far ahead of the competition that it really felt like it was a one horse race and everybody else just scrambling. But if anything, the fact that Cloud that FlyQuest has so many games is the only thing that I think counts for them to have a shot against how dominating this Cloud9 team was. No one else stomps this hard, not even the Immortals lineup that we had before. I was going to say, it's wonderful to have stomped the regular season, but Kobe, we kind of all know that that means nothing if you don't end up taking the title at the end of it all. People look at that Immortals split and it is quite tarnished by the postseason performance. <laughs> and this roster of Cloud9 Nine, they're looking to join the echelons uh, of post LCS winners. Yeah, I was gonna say, I know all of the players, the, the organization as well. This split is like a class where 80% of your grade is the final because it's been six years since they won a championship. None of these players have gotten to lift the trophy. They need this win, they want it so bad to finish off this season. Yeah, Mark, while Cloud9, the organization, has won the LCS twi title rather twice before, it has been, as Kobe mentioned, six years since that point, and none of the current players on that roster are title holders. So, right. again, this is quite, quite an undertaking. Yeah, I mean, you see all the other champions that have come since they won, and it's a lot of double lift, it's a lot of Team Liquid, it's a lot of TSM. <laughs> What's off screen in a lot of these is C9 usually, you know, kind of in the background having been defeated. They, they've made the finals a number of times since their last victory, but they've always come up short. Uh, and so that's why it's such an exciting combination of this historic North American organization who has just barely fallen out of, of, of favor domestically. They still do great internationally, uh, but now with a bunch of players who haven't won North America before and they put on such a dominating performance, it's the perfect culmination for them to finally get that trophy back in C9's hands.
it's really interesting because Reaper is is the one that remains from the times where Cloud9 got so far. And so this is some somewhat like a, a project where you have to come up with a win with a lineup that is completely new and it worked for the academy team. It's working for this team. So I think this just speaks really well to the coaching staff of Cloud9 finally getting their their act together and just proving that investing in infrastructure early on pays off in the long run. And this is where that payoff starting to come in. Yeah, top down for that organization. I had the distinct pleasure of talking to Jack this week on the queue, uh, you know, rewinding all the way to his TSM days before even yeah. purchasing that original Cloud9 roster that would carry him to his first LCS title. And then the whole restructuring and reframing and, and understanding the importance of infrastructure, as you just said, Crumbs, it feels like Cloud9 was one of the first organizations to really jump on that train and invest heavily. And it may have taken six years, as we've seen. They've come so close yet so far as mark said second place in a number of splits but now the fruits of their labor are finally starting to bear uh, in what is uh, looking like it could be one of the most dominant runs in lcs history i think the cool thing about why those fruits are starting to be harvested or whatever the saying would be is if you have a new player where would you send them to de to develop him the answer is the same for everyone. I think you send them to Cloud9. Absolutely. And, and speaking of some of those young players and how much they've leveled up, we're going to gather the thoughts from today's casters in just a few. But before we do, it's important to remember the caliber of players competing today. In particular, Spring Splits Honda MVP. Such an aggressive player. Flabber starting things off. The ult there's your wombo. There's your combo. Flabber goes over the wall and he is unstoppable. He's not back here. So she says, what the oh my play? god! Oh! Jim, you gotta be kidding me, Flabber! Feels super good to finally be able to start in the LCS. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Castle Desks. My name is David Freak Turley, and I'm with the man, the myth, the legend, Joshua Jat Leesman. We want to spend some time talking about the mid jungle because Cloud9 not only have the Honda MVP, but the runner up as well in this game. Yeah, first off, good to be chatting with you, Freak, but these two. Uh, have both been incredible. They were actually first and second in the MVP voting. And in these selected stats, holy crap! <laughs> like, first in their role for KDA, <laughs> yeah. K plus A at 15, which is kills and assists at 15 minutes. Forward percentage, the percentage of time you spend beyond the halfway point on the map. Gold damage difference from their opponent. They have completely run over the LCS, which is why I think it is well deserved that they were one and two in MVP voting. Both of these guys have a symbiotic relationship where they work extremely well together to find these exceptional results. 
Right, they've each credited each other for a lot of their prowess this year, but there's no mistaking this is the best mid-jungle duo in the league. There are no questions of that. But their opponents are, of course, Santorin and Power of Evil, who themselves were the number three all-pro jungler and mid laner, like very strong players themselves. They might be the second or, you know, pessimistically, only yeah. third best mid-jungle duo in the league, and they're here to fight them. I mean, I think at this point, in terms of making it all the way through the playoffs, these guys are second place. When Cloud9 had the opportunity to pick between 100 Thieves and FlyQuest for their first round playoffs opponent, they opted out of picking 100 Thieves, and I think in large part, or sorry, <laughs> and picked 100 Thieves right. in large out, part yeah. because PoE and Santorin are on FlyQuest, and I'm not saying that they are going to match Blabber and Niski because that seems impossible for the LCS this split, but if someone was going to do it, these would be my pick for the people that could challenge them on a really good day. Yeah, and I'm curious if it's going to be a really good day for FlyQuest. The sun is shining, the trees are blooming, it is mm -hmm. spring. We'll see if they have sprung into action in time today. That's what we're looking at here in this Best of Five series. For now, back to you, Dash. Thank you very much, Freak. The sun is shining, the trees are blooming, and I have some breaking news. I was Ooh. I just received word, gentlemen, <laughs> uh, that we have achieved trending status for hashtag cat for Kobe. Well, I just like wanted to put minutes? one more. It only took about five minutes. We have an incredible audience, uh, an incredibly passionate and supportive audience, might I add. So let's keep that one going. Hashtag LCS, hashtag cat for Kobe as we turn our attention back towards this finals day. It's important to remember that while Cloud's, Cloud9's run this split has already been, in a lot of ways, historic, it has still been six years since the org has earned the title. And just to give you all a sense of what that looks like, here is the state of League of Legends The Game. The last time that Cloud9 picked up a win. There were only 118 champions in the game at this point, and Velkaz was the most recently released alongside these other crazy statistics. Yeah, I mean, Bjergsen was still racking up MVPs back then. Uh, yeah, 2014 MVP. Yeah, he just showed up in the in the league. Uh, he was 17 at the time, I believe, because he was just eligible the year before to play in what was then still called the EU LCS. LEC didn't exist yet. Uh, so right. a lot of things were different. No crazy beard on Bjergsen. Just baby face. And just baby face my Bjergsen. favorite is the skin line, because before that, no one really knew what was happening. You won worlds, like, okay, what happens? But now, the fact that those came out, you get a sense of being immortalized in the game, and that makes the eSports so much cooler. I really loved when that SKT line came out. And, for and who knew? Kobe, a... Kobe won 2014 spring. We have a... <laughs> Did you guys... <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm in who there. Knew? Uh, yeah, he's in there. Kobe won. I was going to say, though, for the champions, for reference, we have 148 now. <laughs> So it's actually ridiculous. It is ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Uh, I, I love that you pointed out to the skin line crumbs being immortalized in the game. Faker three times over now at this point. Some more context. This is where some of these Cloud9 players and coaches were six years ago as well. So, uh, I mean, again, just the, the growth of these young players. Uh, Blabber not eligible to play at that time for how young he was. <laughs> Clearly. He's like 13 in that photo. Oh my yeah, goodness. Yeah, no, I'm looking at Vulcan. Like, is that like, what is in front of him? Is, is that a pie? It's pie. I think like, it's a okay. pie. Okay. Right? Okay. It, it looks, looks like a blackberry like a berry, rock. Yeah. Mixed berry pie. He's very excited about it. That's all I know. I got to say, the, the licorice one is super relatable because that was me and my friends uh, in high school and college, just laptops next to each other gaming away. Uh, yeah. I think everyone's, or a lot of people have been in that, that position, so. Yeah, that was probably Licorice's first uh, split or a year playing League of Legends in which he told me, like, it took him, like, two months to get, like, Diamond 1, which is yeah, ridiculous. It's absolutely <laughs> absurd. He was also a mid laner, too, which was interesting before before swapping out of it. But uh, it's not only us who are fired up about this finals. The teams themselves have been uh, quite fired up. Uh, to, you take one look at social, and, and I love the back and forth. It's always nice to see a little bit of uh, jibs and jabs some uh, fun banter and trash talk being thrown. Uh, Cloud9 never afraid to throw the first shot, it seems. And in the past, some it, it's come back to bite them almost. Uh, but this time around, they're feeling quite confident. It comes back to bite them, but they always have the way out where the person who tweeted the <laughs> gets <got> fired. fired. <laughs> yeah, it's no longer working. Here, so I expect this tweet is out fired. of line. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness, uh, but I love it. With Evil Geniuses and FlyQuest having a back and forth before their series yesterday, Cloud9 decided to jump in, throw the trump card. Doesn't matter, you guys are gonna be uh, fighting to see who loses to us anyway. 
the next day. For Solo, it's all about that revenge tour. Uh, we know that him individually coming in so late in the split, what a story for an individual now finding himself in an LCS final, uh, only playing three games of the regular split. Two months ago, teamless, sitting you know, at home waiting for, for a call, and now you're in the finals. Like That is such an insane storyline uh, for, for Solo to go from grinding solo queue, waiting for your next opportunity, to like, oh, here's my next opportunity. It's to potentially take down what's the most dominant North American team of all time in the finals. That is Cloud, a hell of an opportunity. Dream. Yeah, it is quite an opportunity. Cloud9 there uh, in another tweet as well, claiming that this is going to be the fastest domestic best of five in history. That would be a feat, considering we've had a couple quick ones here in the past. Yeah, I mean, what do you say back to Cloud9? <laughs> yeah. That's why all these, all these Cloud9 jabs, you're like, oh, yeah, well, you know, what's the response? And everyone's like, all right, well, you know, uh, they destroyed us the whole season. So uh, I right, guess you can say right. what you want to say. I fully support punching down. Go for it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> My goodness, Mark. All right. Well, um, Kobe, you posed the question. What do you say to a team like Cloud9 that has dominated all split long? I've got good news for you. I challenged one of our two analysts here on the other side side of the screen with coming up with that win condition that response to cloud nine now, yesterday's oh. do-it-yourself win conditions were such a hit the ms paint versions that we decided to bring them back today so kobe and i will be attempting to figure out what our analyst pictionary style are saying the win conditions should be for the teams and we're going to start with crumbs fly quest how do they take down the behemoths in cloud nine let's see it all right brace yourselves this i, I don't know what art. to expect He's self-proclaiming it's art. Here it oh, is. Oh my god. Oh There's my goodness. On. There is this is so much more complex than yesterday's. Okay, okay so Kobe, you take the first crack. Let's start with Cloud9. He's got Reaper and there's a steam cooker <laughs> and then a red. Yeah, pressure. Thunder. Okay, so he's okay. under pressure, so he's panicking and hitting <laughs> hitting the red button. Okay. Flight okay, so yeah, so, so so he wants high. He wants a high pressure draft. Uh -huh. I think what he's saying is Reaper is going to draft a high pressure draft. So really early focus. They're going to hit that that button right out the gate, right? So they're just going to come swinging with the emergency flail button, essentially right out the gate. For FlyQuest, it just looks like spice, right? Yeah. That's what I'm getting. A bunch of yeah. chili peppers. He wants spice left and right here. Look at this! Uh, look at this recipe at the bottom, though. Is that there's like a cake, pickaxe, cheese? Okay. Okay. So you need some cheese. You have to get creative with building something. Okay. Add I in like Ardent 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 Girls. Uh, uh, Professor X, and then like the Ardent X chemical Sensor. from from a from a Powerpuff chemical Girls. X from Powerpuff Girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, and then that equals a trophy. So, so some some kind of special sauce. You know, uh, uh -huh. get bit get radiation exposure. Um, well, I'm trying to figure out how the Ardent Sensor fits in. What about the middle, guys? Because yeah, I mean, the then it's a clear. cheesecake. That's the easy to understand part is the middle. It's, just, it's just, You cheese them. Yeah, dunk, well, it's, the middle is them uh, dunking on the, the mid-jungle duo. It's there you go. It's and okay. here about the... Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so FlyQuest mid-jungle duo has to dumpster. I like how that's a picture of Stixe and not Power of Evil. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Which is interesting. <laughs> there, there is one thing you guys did that kind of mess up. So it's Reaper with Cloud9 under pressure. It's the pressure yeah. cooker and then dropping the ball. So Cloud9 needs to oh, drop it's a the ball. ball. Oh, it looks like he's oh, pressing a, a ball. ball. Yeah. Oh, I thought and it was then a button. The recipe, it's a counter and a pick. So counter pick plus cheese and then use oh. maybe the, the Lulu Janna that we just saw in LEC. Now, it's we just saw it there, but it's thriving in solo key right now so it could okay. be a big curveball and then the x factor is just you need x factor you know all right this is actually, wow like this, you, you this is very it. complex and well thought out okay all right well, we got the win condition for FlyQuest. uh mark you've got cloud nine what's it gonna be uh, i think mine's just as complicated just as yeah let's find out uh show up oh my goodness you know what though what i appreciate is that he he had different hairstyles he could have mark I, in typical mark fashion i would have expected to draw one stick figure and copy paste he drew five individual stick figures and gave them all gave them all haircuts i i think yeah. his scale is a little off though uh maybe you don't have the social distancing in there so uh, That's i don't true. know i'll give uh, you half credit mark good attempt yeah Sven, mm. Sven should be a lot taller now that you mentioned it he should be towering over the, the setup. Okay. True. All right. So it's it's show up versus the the most Whoa. complex win condition I've ever seen in my life. Show up is underselling it a little bit. They've already done all the hard work, right? Like they've mm. been so good all split long. They've put all the effort in. You just got to treat it like another day. Just yeah. Just show up. 
I guess. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I think from here we've got nowhere left to go than our predictions for the day. And I'm going to come to you, Kobe, first. Uh, with these very insightful wind conditions in mind, uh, maybe you were swayed one way or the other. I don't know. Let's lay it out there for the fans at home. Who's taking the best of five and will name themselves LCS Spring Champions? Cloud9 or FlyQuest? Uh, honestly, Mark's uh, simple to and easy to understand wind conditions really swayed me at the end. So uh, I'm going 3-1 <laughs> for Cloud9. I give in one game to uh, FlyQuest to keep it interesting here. But yeah, that's what, yeah. Where's your graphic, Kobe? I All right, easy to... messed it up. Uh, <laughs> How do you mess it up? Someone <laughs> my, my, builds these for us. My graphic has turned into three and one. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. All right. Well, there it is. Uh, so Kobe calls the Cloud9 victory following the easy to, easy to follow uh, footsteps from Mark's game plan. Mark, who do you call? Uh, I'm giving it the uh, good old 3-0 for C9. I think they'll crush. 3-0? Um, yeah. I, I think what you know we've seen out of FlyQuest has been really impressive in, in recent weeks. Um, but I think there's just too many power points on the map for C9 for them to be able to contest all of them. Uh, maybe if they can actually win mid-jungle 2v2, they can win the game if Ignar is also playing well. Uh, but that just feels so hard to do because we've seen C9 lose mid-jungle 2v2 and still win games. So you have to continue to outperform them, which is really hard to do and why I give it the 3-0. You know, still calling yeah, oh. still calling a very favored matchup for Cloud9. Crumbs, you were the man who laid down the plan for FlyQuest. Do you think that they have what it takes to follow that to victory? Well, listen, all evidence everywhere points to Cloud9 winning. So yes. if you want He's to believe the other in FlyQuest way, winning, you're, <laughs> no. you're the kind of person that likes to believe in conspiracy theories. When all evidence points one way, you want to go the opposite way. Unfortunately... Uh, that's not me, so <laughs> I'm going to go with Cloud9 going uh, close, though, because I actually do think that Wow! said, here's why, here's why, though. Cloud9 said they would expect to go in a five-game best-of-series against Evil Geniuses. Evil Geniuses got bopped by FlyQuest, so Ooh. if they thought EG would be close, why wouldn't FlyQuest be close as well? So I think it's going to be much closer than anticipated, and I'm just going with C9 because all the evidence says C9. Okay, that interesting. I want to explore that a little bit more. The I, understanding that you, you're taking just some word from Cloud9 themselves saying they expected a close series out of one opponent, and you know um, they dodged FlyQuest at the beginning of playoffs as well. So you know that's the thing that Jasmine. Uh, really focusing on as well. So I think there's a lot going on there. You know, FlyQuest was the second best team at the very beginning of the split, and they ended up at the finals as well. So this is a strong team. And you, so where, where are those two wins coming from primarily? I mean, I know you laid out that very complex win condition, but do you think it's that jungle mid duo specifically for FlyQuest that will net them the two victories? I think the reality is you have to fight fire with fire. Like you're not going to be able to avoid what Cloud9 is bringing you. So you need to stay with the initiative and make sure that you have a stronger 2v2. You're going to start the first game on red side. So if you start red side, you have a way to have a good counter pick, whether it's for a jungle or mid or whatever you want. Play around that and see if a stronger matchup can translate to a 2v2 win. Because if you don't beat Niski Blabber, how do you beat Cloud9? Like you have to strike where they are strong. The right. Thing Okay. The one wrinkle, Go ahead, Mark. I'll throw in is, is we've talked about Ignar all split long with his unique counter picks. Uh, Vulcan is really good, and I mentioned it before, but he did underperform once in their loss to TSM in the regular season. Maybe if you can find some way to make him uncomfortable in the laning phase and, and set him behind, that's another avenue to attack. I was going to say, because even, even beating Blabber and Niski, you're still looking at three other members on the map for Cloud9 that presumably then are still performing well. Uh, Kobe, how how many players on Cloud9 do you have to individually beat before you even have a chance of beating the team holistically? Spoiler, James, you have to beat <laughs> the whole team when you're the all five, <laughs> all five uh, players to win the game. Um, honestly, though, I do think that that it is possible for them to for them to get victories, right? Because Turtle and Ignar have been playing very well i think a lot better than the rest of the season recently uh and it has to do with how many games that they have played they've already played just as many games in playoffs here as the regular season and it's been an upward trajectory so i think they have the the right plan and my suggestion for the mid jungle would actually just be to neutralize the blabber and niski offensive uh moves for power of evil because he has been able to scale up into an absolute monster every single game his damage per minute numbers are by far the highest in the entire league 
Well, sometimes when things feel the most certain is when we all have to strap in and get ready for a surprise. FlyQuest looking to do that today, stun the world in taking down the number one seeded Cloud9. With that, it's my cue to roll us over into the MasterCard opening ceremony. Welcome to the 2020 Spring Finals. For the first time since 2017, a new champion will be named. Today, two teams share one common goal, to be crowned the Kings, FlyQuest and Cloud9. After being written off as a team that is only there to plant trees and smile wide, we have a roster that has already delivered two upset wins and now aims to soar away with the title. FlyQuest, starting in the top lane, holding his own after a late split swap. Solo, making his first final since 2015 and third All-Pro jungler. Santorin, All-Pro mid laner and bringing the firepower for FlyQuest. Power of Evil, the core of FlyQuest and biggest smile in the LCS. It's Wild Turtle. Behind him, the explosive engager in support, Ignar. This is your FlyQuest starting roster. An absolute juggernaut whose dedication to improvement and domination have brought them back to the final with eyes set on their first title in six years. It's Cloud9. In the top lane, first all-pro top laner and leader for the new era of Cloud9, Licorice. In his first split as the sole starting jungler, he earns the title of Honda MVP, Blabber. Unmatched all split long in his role, making back-to-back -back finals, Niski. Bouncing back under a new organization and returning to the finals, it's Sven. In the bot lane, the support prodigy himself, Vulcan. It's your 17-1, Cloud9. Let's get ready for your 2020 Spring Final. Cloud9 versus FlyQuest. Thank you again to MasterCard for that opening ceremony and welcome once again to the Caster Desk. We are about ready to get into the games. I am Freak. To my side is Jack and we will see an LCS champion be crowned today. We really will. And I feel like it's just kind of sinking in for me watching the whole countdown and watching that opening ceremony that this is 
the finals and what we've been doing for the past three months and especially for the past month going to this remote broadcast is culminating in something really meaningful. I mean, we have Cloud9, who, if they go undefeated, will end with the highest win percentage across regular season and playoffs. In